I'm making sourdough today. So this is a sourdough I've made yesterday. Now sourdough is just um, bread that's leavened by yeast that's captured from the air. So this is New Zealand. New Zealand air that's created this frothy looking spongy brew of flour and water. That's all it is. It's just some flour and water. Really simple. So we'll just switch on the scales here. So I'm going to put 60 grams of that frothy brew into here. And the rest will be made into the loaf. Okay, so once you've got your be careful to tip the scale sometimes they don't to keep up with the actual weight, so that's saying 65 grams. So all I'm gonna do is add 60 grams of flour to that. This is high grade flour, so it's there's standard flour and there's high grade flour and this is standard. Ah, sorry, high grade. High grade has more protein. Yeah, it says 66. And some warm water. So this is about blood temperature water. Another 60 grams. Just tapping the bowl just in case. It doesn't register. So it's basically... Um, 60 of the sponge sixty water and sixty flour. Now that keeps it going. Now to start with what you just have is like I don't know, say a hundred grams of flour, a hundred grams of water, and then um, from that mixture you only keep 60 the next day, like I've done here, and then add the 60 flour and 60 water. And you keep up that ratio for about five days, every day changing it, just leaving it at room temperature, out, out at room temp temperature, and you should end up with that. You do need to be, uh, you know, repetitive. Um, I ignored a day, I think, once, and I ended up with a bit of brown water on top of it. Um, they tell you just to tip the brown water off and start again, add a bit more water though, um, and you can still keep it going. So it's actually pretty um, safe. The other thing is you can add, uh, add your mixture together and you can put it in the fridge overnight after it's risen. And that can stall or delay the time you have to use it by about, about by about four days they say. So I've got my mixture here. Now I'm just going to add my dry ingredients, which are simply um, the high grade flour, which is going to be two cups. So that's one. There's a little bit less in there. Um, and two. I'm not exactly, you know, down to perfection, so some give or take. Now, I'm also going to add gluten fair. So, see that the, I'm just going to estimate that I have to add that makes extra gluten flour to it. Now, gluten flour is higher in protein, so it makes it more chewy and. Um, and uh, it's a bit of crust on it as well so now I've had two cups of that and I'm going to add a cup of water this is that warm water just about perfect there so a little bit left 
Um, I find you don't have, well I haven't been really measuring it down to the gram, it seems to be working out for me. And a bit less than a teaspoon of salt. And then all I do is, take that spoon that I used earlier and just use that as the um, mixer, instead of you mixing it by hand. So I just go at it like this until it forms a dough. Now, you know, after a while you get a feel for it, after you've baked a few of them, whether you need to add a bit more liquid or a bit more flour. But uh, the sprue seems to be working okay for me. You can sort of feel if it's a bit tough when you're shifting it around like this. Okay, so this looks rather slack when you look at everybody else's videos of how to make sourdough. You know, they'll knead the hell out of it or, or whatever. And with mixes and that sort of thing, well... This is just so some, anybody at home could do it. Or, you know, if you're out in a hut, like the old pioneers were. And this is really um, how they got the nickname of the an old sourdough. <laughs> it's because they used to make their bread that way. We'll see how I do in the camp oven, you know. You'll, you'll see why in a, in a minute. I'll just uh, stir this up, um, and I'll probably fast forward it. So you know, square um, one would probably be a bit better because this is a knife. It's not really. Stirring up the gluten in all directions. Put it down here, I've got a bit more leverage. So you'll see the uh, gluten developing because the um, bread will sort of start pulling away a bit from the outside. It sort of sticks to itself more than it does the outside of the bowl. So it's a really simple recipe. I'm just doing it like that, pulling it out every now and then, get another, grab it at another place. There's no real baker um, technique to this at all. This is homemade. And, you know, I mean, I'm not saying that this is better than the bakers, but it'll do. I'm quite happy with, it, with what I've produced there. You can sort of see it's changed now. See I'm pulling it now, it's pulling away from the side of the bowl quite easily. It sort of can stick to itself, so I think that'll do it. So simple as that. Now, the other thing you want to do is have a bowl that will tip out easy. So this has got, instead of straight sides, uh, sort of out to an angle and butter the uh, base of it. Butter the bottom really well. Just only butter. Will be. And, and that's it. It's so basic. Just give it a good covering because sometimes it can stick. <clears throat> you don't want that. Yeah, I mean, there seems to be a big mystery about how to make sourdough. Well, you know, the old timers, when they had traps and that sort of thing, they'd go away from the, go away from it, leave it. I guess they'd call the huts and all that sort of stuff. A bit like a fridge or whatever, and then come back and then warm it up over the stove. But, you know, they went fussy. Just grab a little bit of flour just to spread it out in your hand so it doesn't stick. You can cover, your, cover it in water but um, this way you leave a little bit of that flour look on top. Looks kind of cool. Just like it came out of a... Um, just look at, like it came out of a bakery. Okay folks, that's it. We'll come back uh, later and bake it. So after... 
six hours. It's all puffed up, well over twice the size. If you let it go uh, too long, it'll go back down again. So you've got to actually catch it on the rise. And the oven is set at 180 degrees centigrade. And there's a pan of water down the bottom. You cannot see it, but it's in there. Uh, it's a non-melt one, obviously. So just put the put the bread in uh, off to the side, not above the um, pan because there's radiant heat coming up from the bottom. Close the door and time it for about 36 minutes. So here it is after 36 minutes. Uh, popped out of the pan reasonably well it's stuck a bit here you do need to thoroughly grease the bottom of the pan and make sure it's nice and uh, clean as well not being a thick loaf it doesn't take that long to bake and it can bake all the way through with the water in the pan it steams it uh, and if you're in a camp oven that's got a closed lid on top that also steams it as well it doesn't let the moisture escape like it doesn't you know a big circulating oven that's why you've got to have some water in the oven with it if you don't then you'll probably just end up with a really hard top and a not so well cooked bottom so it helps it cook evenly all right so here we are as we'll see what it turned out like taste test So it's all cooked through. This is not hot anymore, it's just about warm. Not too much butter. <laughs> not too much cholesterol. Mmm. Can't beat it, eh?